do it now. I'll do it later. Too. I'm good. Uh, how did it work out for Diana? Oh, it was a. Uh, I don't know what Diana's saying. My sister. Oh, shit, she had a funeral or something. Yeah, I didn't. A funeral? I don't know, man. I didn't hear that. I'm so sorry. That's okay. I thought we let her use the funeral. I didn't, I haven't, I didn't hear about that. Mm.
Okay, okay, okay. Good morning, everybody. And this is the February 8th edition of Uplift with Cliff, and I am your host, your chief servant, the one who loves you like no other. I am Cliff Long. Listen, I have every indication. Good morning, Rose Kemp. Good morning, Yola. Look at here. Look at all the uplift we've rolling in. Hey, I've been looking for you. I have been looking for you. Good morning, Will Laval, Cara, Reese Stewart, Grace. Good morning, uh, Lisa Hill. Good morning. I've, I've missed a couple of people. I see Veronica. Maria, Maria Alejandro, numero uno. I see you. Um, Claudia, Jenny, Jade, Shani, look here. This is going to be a great week, everybody. I have every indication, every reason, every thought. Everything points to the fact that this is going to be your best week ever. You're going to kill it this week. You're going to smash it. You're going to win this week in the game of life the same way our Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Tom Brady won the Super Bowl. This is going to be your week, everybody, and it's going to be your week to shine. If you go online, you can check CNN USA Today. You can check the Wall Street Post, the Wa I'm sorry, the Washington Post and the Wall Street Journal. And you're not going to find it in print anywhere. That this is not going to be your best week ever. You can shift over to the internet. You can check every website you want to check. But all indications are that you're going to kill it this week. You're going to be your very best this week, and nothing can stop you. Good morning, Joanne. Oh, you caught that. I see you, Joanne. You got a good ear there. Star Williams Kelly, it is good to see you. My man, Frank McManus. Okay, I got to go in. Good morning, Chi Chi. Good, good to see you. That's right. Look at my people rolling in. My hallelujah crowd. Okay, okay, okay. So listen, while we're waiting on a few people to come in, it's 9.31 a.m. And the uplifters are getting up. They're getting out of bed. They're wiping all that stuff out of their eyes. They're washing their face. I hope you're already in the office. But if you're not, get up, get up, get up, get up. Monday has already started and it is not waiting for you or anyone else. This is the February 8th edition of Uplift with Cliff. And in the spirit of the Super Bowl, in the spirit of one of the greatest Super Bowl victories in the history, in the spirit of the GOAT, the man himself, the greatest of all time, Tom Brady, I'm going to talk to you today about seven things that really big winners do. Seven things that really, seven things that really big winners do. Now, the first thing you got to know is and be able to answer is, what is a winner? What is a winner? If you've never seen a winner before, then mosey on over to your bathroom, look in the mirror and tell me what you see. If you see something in there looking back at you, that's you, honey. That's you, Reese Stewart. That's you, Natalie. Good morning, Donna. You are the winner, excuse me, that I'm talking about. So I want to talk to you this morning about some things that winners do. You see, we all know losing behavior. You know losing behavior when you see it. But there are some things that winners do consistently that separate them from everyone else. You see, you can be right here, but if you want to go on up here to be a winner, and not just a winner, but a champion, there's going to be some things that you do that everyone else does not do. All right, I see you, Rosie. Good morning to you as well. Anna, Donna, let's go in. Okay, the first thing that winners do. Now, this is going to seem like a no-brainer, but it's not because there's a lot of spectators out there, a lot of people who talk big game but don't actually do a thing. The first thing that winners do is winners get in the game. Listen, people who are looking for an invitation to join a project or a team or work for a company, all they do is sit on the sidelines and signify. Don't sit on the sidelines and signify. Get yourself in the game. Winners, if they get an invitation to play, they play and they don't hesitate. And they bring their A game every time. If you want to impress people, you got to bring your A game, not your B game. And you got to get in the game. Stop talking about what this association is doing and that association. Stop talking about what EXP and Colwell and Keller and all them. What are you doing? What are you doing? Get yourself in the game. Stop talking about everybody else's business model and master your business model. 
Stop talking about what everybody else is doing and make everybody else talk about what you're doing. Hashtag WOD, baby. What is Aura doing? Winners get in the game. So this week, I want you to get all out of the stands. I want you to get off the bench. I want you to go out and tell coach, put me in the game, coach. You got to get in the game this week because winners get in the game. They don't sit down and talk about what everybody else is doing. They get out on the field and make a difference. The field can be at your brokerage. The field can be at your church. The field can be in your family. The field can be anywhere. But don't just sit there and talk about what other people are doing. Live your life. Go live this life. It's not going to live itself. Real winners get in the game, okay? So stop talking about it and be about it. If you're an uplifter today and you hear my voice, I want you to get ready, get ready, get ready, because the game is about to be played. It's out there in the streets. You need to strap up, strap on, and get ready. Get in the game. Winners get in the game. You cannot win the game from the bench. You cannot win the game from the internet. Woo! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You can't win the game posting on Facebook eight hours a day. You can't win the game on Twitter, and you can't win it on IG. If you're in the game, you got to go talk to some people, call some people, set some appointments, engage some people, and get going because that's what winners do. It is February the 8th. This is Uplift with Cliff. And I want all 18,000 of you people out there this week to get on fire, get in the game, and make something happen. Okay. The second thing that winners do, I got to go. I got to get through all my points today. I can't sit there and say good morning to everybody today. Y'all get me every week because I get so happy to see you. Good morning, Rena. Good morning, Joanna. Okay, I'm going to stop that. The second thing that winners do, winners boldly ask for what they want. You got to know what you want. You can't be a winner if you don't know what you want, and you got to know how to ask for it. Winners know that there's no harm in asking for the things that they want or, 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 or that would help you get ahead. You got to ask for it. Don't just be rude, pushy, and naggy when you do it. Be nice about it, but ask about it. Ask and inquire about it. Winners boldly ask for what they want. Listen, this week, in order to win, you have got to know what you want. There's not, Listen, there's so many people out there that are indecisive. Indecision is the thief of opportunity. You cannot sit down on the sidelines, I don't know what you want. Well, I don't know what we're going to eat. What are you going to eat? I don't know where we're going to go. Where do you want to go? No. Winners are decisive and winners know what they want. This week, I want you guys to know what you want. You need to be able to say it, and you need to get in the game. This is going to be your best week ever because you're going to make all the right decisions because you're going to make the decisions. That's right. Winners know what they want, and winners boldly ask for what they want. Do I have one or two people out there, all you uplifters? I want you to go after it this week. This week, the week of uh, the 8th, is going to be your best week ever because you're going to go get in the game and you know what you want and you're going to ask to. Listen, you got to say, put me in the game, coach. You can't be content with sitting on the bench watching all your friends take their shot. You got to be able to say, put me in the game, coach. You got to be able to say to your partner, hey, look, are we going to make those calls? Are we going to start our company? Are we going to get that license? You got to get in the game. You got to know what you want. Indecision is the thief of opportunity. Your inability to decide is going to rob you of the opportunities that come along. So this week, know what you want, get in the game, and boldly ask for it. Good morning, Ted in Vegas. Good to see you. Good to see you, my brother. All right? Give me a thumbs up if you guys are ready to go out this week and, uh, and, and take your life back. Shoot me a couple of thumbs up. Okay, okay, okay. Now, winners, winners understand there's fear of influence. Oh, everybody has a sphere of influence. Everyone has a sphere of influence. But winners understand their sphere of influence. They know that they can't do everything. Hey, listen, I might know how to run an association, but I know nothing about a jewelry store, so I stay in the association world. I may know how to change my brakes and, and, and put some fluids in the car, but you know what? I go get a mechanic to do that for me. I know my sphere of influence. Winners focus their energy, their energy on the people and places where they can affect the most change and growth in positive ways. In other words, winners stay in their lane. Uh-oh. 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 You guys ain't going to like that. Winners stay in their lane. Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Greatest to ever play the game. 
greatest quarterback. Hey, look, he knows he cannot play linebacker. He knows that he is not a lineman, and he knows that he is not a defensive back. Now, he might know what those people are supposed to be doing, but he doesn't go and try to play their positions. He coaches and, and, and he gives them encouragement to do their very best at the position. I need you guys to understand, know your sphere of influence, and stay in your lane. This week, let that discipline. Don't try to do what you are not there to do. If you're Brady, play quarterback. If you're Ndamukong Sue, play nose guard. But don't try to play somebody else's position. There is nothing more frustrating than when I'm here at the association and somebody else wants to be CEO. No, 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 no. Listen, I might make it look easy and glamorous, but you play your role and I'll play mine, but we can't play the same role. And I have to understand that I will, I'm not a realtor. I'm not going to sell real estate. I don't want to sell a real estate. I want to help you sell more real estate. I want to help you be the best realtor that you can be. And when I stay in my lane and work my sphere of influence, then we both win. So look, if you're commercial, don't try to sell residential. If you're residential, stay out of commercial. If you're an agent, don't tell your broker what to do. But if you're a broker and your agent's producing, leave them alone. Winners understand their sphere of influence and they stay in their lane. This is Uplift with Cliff. It's 9.40 a.m. Monday morning, February the 8th, and we're going in this morning. Winners do specific things that other people don't do. I want you guys to understand, stay in your lane, and specialize in what you do. Okay. Now, here's something else that winners do. And this is a big one. This is a big one. We're moving on. Number one, winners get in the game. Number two, winners boldly ask for what they want. Number three, winners understand their sphere of influence and stay in their lane. Here is number four. If you look at the things that I'm talking about, if you look at the game last night, if you look at any champion, whether it's college or, or NBA or whether it's uh, who wins the stock market, they all do the same thing. Um, so here's number four. Winners leverage the strength of others. Whoo. Okay. Winners leverage the strength of others. You are not a one-man band. The show is not about you alone. It is not just about you. If you're going to be successful in business this week, you're going to, yes, that's right, Lisa, you got it. You're going to have to learn to leverage others around you. A winner knows that his or her gifts, uh, they, and they know how to take advantage of them. Winners also have the ability to see the strength and contribution of others around them. Winners know that uh, sharing a win is better than a solo effort. Sharing a win is better than a solo effort. So how do you become successful? By leveraging your team. Some someone else may be better on the sale or the listing or the close. Let them take the lead. You handle the administrative work. I know that being CEO here at the Association of Realtors, I just get to wear the title, but I know my staff's doing the work. I know that I'm just one, one, one fiftieth of, if I've got 50 employees, I'm just one fiftieth of it. I am the sum total of all my employees. I'm the spokesperson for them. But my employees are the ones actually getting the work done. So you better believe I stay out of their way and I leverage their strength to make this association go forward. I don't go try to sit in Ashley's desk and do education or membership. I wouldn't know how to do it. Amanda or Mary Kay does, I stay out of their lane. But I know this, together we can do anything and we leverage their strength to create one of the best associations in America and definitely the fastest growing. So winners leverage the strength of others. How well are you leveraged today? I want to ask you that. How well are you leveraged today? Do you know what the strengths and weaknesses are of the people around you? Do you? I had a friend of mine uh, reach out to me this weekend. He had a situation, no names, no names, no names. A friend of mine had a situation where he needed to uh, uh, receive some better service in a place he was. And uh, while he's there, he's just a client. But he needed to be able to reach the CEO. Well, this friend... Uh, wanted, when he wanted to reach the CEO of that company, he reached out to me on Saturday and said, hey, I need your help. Um, 
He leveraged the friendship and he did the right thing. He didn't take advantage of me. He leveraged his friendship and I leveraged the things that this association gives me advantage to. And I had the CEO of that association name within five minutes and I told him we'll handle business service. Do you know how to do that? Do you know how to leverage the strength of others to accomplish what you want? I had a friend reach out recently and say, hey, look, um, I'd like to get tickets to this or that event. Can you get tickets to that event? I said, uh, let me make a few calls. I made a few calls and I had tickets to the event. Leverage the strength of others to make yourself more successful. That's right. Stacy Stahl says build a support system and surround yourself with success. Now that's key because I'm going to put a hangnail right there. You can't leverage the strength of others if the others around you have no strength. <laughs> Somebody ought to give me some applause there. Can I get a couple of thumbs up? You can't leverage the strength of others around you if the others around you have no strength. You hear me say all the time, by now, you should have changed your circle. Tico, they heard me say this. If you got the same old circle that you had, if you're still hanging around your homeboys and your homegirls, if everybody, if no one around you is producing on the level you want to produce on, then that's your fault. I'm going to take you needed in blame because for six months I've been preaching, change your circle. So you cannot leverage the strength of others around you if the others around you have no strength. So sooner or later you guys are going to get that all this stuff that I've been telling you comes together. And if you do what I ask, if you do what I say, everything works together for your good. Lisa Hill knows what I'm talking about. Florida knows what I'm talking about. Rosie knows what I'm talking about. Ryan got it. Mary understands. I told you a long time ago that in order to win, sometimes you have to change your circle so you can't be hanging around the same people that you came up with unless the people you came up with are where you want to be. So, all right. You, so if I'm telling you right now, number four, you got to be able to leverage the strength of others around you. If you haven't changed your circle, then all you can do is leverage the people who helped you get right where you are and you're just not going to make any progress. <sighs> okay, it's Uplift with Cliff, 9.46 a.m. and we are on time doing our thing. I see you, Frank. Frank understands. Frank understands. You got to change your circle. Okay, number five. Now, this one is going to be hard for some of you people who are humble in spirit, but you got to do it. The fifth thing you got to do, winners relentlessly self-promote. Oh, yeah. If you ain't advertising, then how, how does anyone know you exist? Winners relentlessly self-promote. When players go out and seek a new team, they don't go and say, well, I'm just going to give you my best. They tell you, if you hire me, you're getting the best. When you go out to see a, a client or you out talking to somebody, do you, when they say, well, show me your portfolio, who have you worked with, you don't say, well, I really just been hoping to work with a few people, but my mama, she always told me I had a hitch in my left shoulder. I wasn't going to be nothing. No. Winners relentlessly self-promote. You must self-promote. You must self-promote. Cliff, Cliff, that's not humble. Cliff, that's not humility. Cliff, if I self-promote, that's not what I'm supposed to do. Uh, no. What do you think it means when somebody walks up to you and says, I am the way and the truth and the life? That's called self-promotion, honey. If you're not self-promoting, who's promoting you? I'm trying to help a few people today. Winners relentlessly self-promote. Studies show that successful people tirelessly promote themselves and their businesses. Winners don't waste time with shyness or self-doubt. If you're shy out there today, and certainly if you're doubting, you are behind the eight ball. You got to go out this week. If you want this to be your best week ever, if you got a real estate school, or if you got a brokerage, or if you got a team, or if you got a sales system, or if you've got anything that you know is going to put you over the top, then you must, you must, you must, you must, you must self promote. You must get yourself out there. You must let people know you exist. You must people let people know that you're open for business. You must let people know that doing business with you is absolutely different than doing business with everybody else. You must, you must, you must self-promote. It is not about humility. It's about doing better, being better, and getting in the game. It is paramount, paramount, that if you're going to be a winner, you must 
self-promote. You can't wait on other people to do it for you. You can't wait on other people to tell somebody how great you are. You can't wait on other people to put you in the game. You've got to say, I'm ready. Put me in the game. Leverage the strength of other people. And you must self-promote and put yourself out there. I don't know any other way to tell you how you're going to reach that level of success because they're not going to walk outside the stadium and pull you out of the line. They're not going to walk to the concession stand and, and pull you out. They're not going to hold a raffle and ask you to come down to the court. They're not going to walk over to the bench and tell you to put your shoes on. If you want to get in the game, you got to say, put me in the game and you got to go out and get in the game because ain't nobody coming out to get you. You've got to get up there and do it yourself this week. If you're going to be the winner, if you're going to be the champ, if you're going to be the one that's standing on stage, if you're going to be the one that's collecting that check, then you're going to have to get out and go get it this week. And I believe you can do it. That's right. Put yourself, Ted, you, you understand it's a real estate TED talk. Put yourself out there. You've got to put yourself out there. Okay. Number six. Okay. I got off track. I love you guys so much. I got off track. Here we go. Number six. You ready? Winners shake off the losses. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you're going to miss sometimes. Sometimes they're going to choose somebody else. Sometimes you're not going to get it right. But true winners shake off the losses. You can't sit there and study every interception. You can't study every fumble. You can't study every slip and fall. You can't study every strikeout. You can't study every divorce. You can't study every firing. You can't study every resignation. You cannot continue to study uh, those losses. You have to shake it off, brush yourself off, get your butt up, and get back in the game. This week, get your butt up and get back in the game. Get your butt up and get back in the game. Shake off the losses so it happened to you. Woo! Build a bridge and get over it. Cry your last tear, but do not sit down and dwell in that low space forever because you have got to get back out there. People are depending on you. Your team depends on you. Your brokerage depends on you. Your children depend on you. Your wife depends on you. Your husband depends on you. Everyone's depending on you. And if you are a winner, winners know that when something doesn't go their way, they must quickly deal with any disappointment associated with it. You got to learn from the experience and you got to get right back in the game. You got to learn. Uh, you got to deal with the disappointment, learn from the experience, get back in the game. And with a positive attitude. Yep, you got to do it with a positive attitude. That's right. Cry your last tear and shake it off. Winners know. I'm going to say this one more time. You got to deal with the disappointment. Okay, okay. I'm going to slow this down. Even if I go three minutes over, I want y'all to type it in the screen. Step one, deal with the disappointment. Deal with the disappointment. Deal with the disappointment. Type it in there. This is for you so that you remember it. Number two, learn from the experience. You got to deal with it and you got to learn from it. Number two, learn from the experience. If you can't type, give me a couple thumbs up or some hearts. I got to know you're engaged. Number one, deal with the disappointment. Number two, learn from the experience. Number three, get back in the game with a positive attitude. Get back in the game with a positive attitude. Get back in the game with a positive attitude. Get back in the game with a positive attitude. Okay? Learn from the uh, disappointment. Learn, I'm sorry, yeah, deal with the disappointment, learn from the experience, get right back in the game with a positive attitude. If you can do that, then you will have what they call bounce back. Woo, look at here, look at here. Tico, you got to have bounce back. Look at here, Lisa Hill, you got to have bounce back, sister. Will Laval, if you can do that, you're going to have what they have, you're going to have what they call bounce back. You got to have bounce back. If you don't have bounce back, life is going to do you in. If you don't have bounce back, you may as well quit right now. If you don't have bounce back, then you ain't got that magic in your life. You have got to have bounce back. And that's how you do it. Deal with the disappointment. Kelly said it. Kelly, Kelly, I'm going to read. Deal with the disappointment. Learn from the experience. Get back in the game with a positive attitude. And if you can do that, you have what they call bounce back. Listen, I tell my folks all the time, you're going to make some mistakes. Don't study the mistake. Let me see how quickly you bounce back. Let me see how quickly you get back on your feet. Because see, if you're going to take this journey where I'm going, we're going to make some mistakes. Where I'm going, we're going to mess up sometimes. Where I'm going, we might spend a dollar that we didn't intend on spending. But you know what? My bounce back game is strong. And by the time you figure out I made a mistake, I'm on to the next thing. 
I want to know if you got bounced back. Deal with it. Deal with it. Okay, here we go. Winners shake off their losses. So go back. Number one, winners get in the game. Number two, winners boldly ask for what they want. Number three, winners understand their sphere of influence. They stay in their lane. Number four, winners leverage the strengths of others. Number five, winners relentlessly self-promote. Number six, winners shake off their losses. And number seven, the last one. I'm so happy I'm getting done with it today. Number seven. That's right. Who's next? Number seven. Winners pursue the awesome experience. Winners pursue the awesome experience. Listen, life is about the journey and not the destination. Winners understand that life is finite. It does have an end. Winners invest their time and their energy in the things that excite them and reap the benefits for themselves and the people that they care about. It, life is about the journey, not the destination. Winners are always in pursuit of the experience. Oh my God, okay, listen, listen. I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm about to tell you something. Uh, 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 fall in love with the hunt. Fall in love with the hunt. I'm going to give you one of my life's golden nuggets right here. Listen, once you take your shot, the hunt is over. Tico, I hope you, you're getting this. Fall in love with the hunt, honey. Fall in love with the hunt. Fall in love with practice. After the game, once you played the game, the game is over. You got to fall in love with the process. Okay, I'm about to break down the secret of life. <clears throat> if you want to be the best realtor ever, it's not about the clothes. It's about the processes leading up to the clothes. Master the processes. Fall in love with the processes. Make the sales cycle and not the sale be the best thing. Fall in love with the sales cycle and not the sale because life is about the journey and not the destination. Yeah, you want to you want to you want the train to come to the station sometime, but you got to learn how to enjoy the train ride. I'm trying, Chris, <laughs> they don't want me to hoop, Chris. Listen, yes, it's great when the train reaches the destination, but you have got to learn how to enjoy the train ride. Life is about the journey and not the destination. Fall in love with the sales cycle. How many people do you have in the cycle? And can you master the process of molding the sale? You got to become an expert there. If you're out there and you're all about the destination, well, I'm here today to tell you life is but a vapor. It's here today and it's gone tomorrow. Love the process. You see, some of you guys are in love with the sale. Some of you guys are in love with, with, the, with the election. But you got to fall in love with the campaign. Chris, tell them, you got to fall in love with the campaign, not just the election. Learn to love the process. Prospecting has to be your expertise. Woo! Prospecting has to become your expertise. You see, what a lot of people don't know about those Tampa Bay Buccaneers, is that when they shut down the whole league for COVID, the Buccaneers found a high school practice field, knowing that they were even risking their lives, and they went out and practiced on their own away from the New England, away from the Bucs uh, facilities. You couldn't stop them. They knew that perfection was in the process. Anna Lugo, good morning. Arlene, good morning. The Buccaneers knew that perfection was in the process and that during the game, that only manifests what you've been practicing. The reason that Alabama was a successful college football team, Roll Tide, was because when everybody else shut down, Coach Nick Saban gave every player an Apple iWatch and connected to every player's iWatch so that he could monitor their workouts during the season when no one else was practicing and then he held them personally responsible and he knew exactly who was in shape and who wasn't because he could monitor their heart rate and their exercise from a distance when they weren't even on campus. Fall in love with the process of becoming a winner and you will become a winner.
Because winning, that moment is brief. It takes just a second. But then it's on to the next season, on to the next client, on to the next sale. Fall in love with the sales cycle and the sale will become something else to you. Okay, I hope that I've helped you guys. That's right, never stop. Roll tight. You know, and, ah, I hope that I've helped one or two of you guys understand how great you can be and how to achieve greatness this week. This is going to be your best week ever. I need to give, send out a couple of... Um, uh, first of all, let me send my love out to a couple of you folks. Uh, Rena, I love you. Uh, Rose Kemp, never stop. Uh, Lisa Hill, Chris Hughes. Hey, Chris Hughes is my guy. Uh, pastor, former tax collector in North Carolina. Love you, my brother. Good to see and hear from you this morning. Um, uh, Anna Lugo, Arlene, I want you guys to know that I love you all. I love this process. You see, there is no destination of Uplift with Cliff. It's an eternal process of helping you become your best person ever. There's no destination of Uplift. It's an eternal process of making sure that you know that you're loved and God loves you. There is no destination here. It's the eternal process of you always having something positive for you to look forward to each week to set the tone for your business because I want any Anyone associated with this association and anyone associated with me to feel like they can be the best that they can be and to know that they're loved. So, Cara, uh, Florida Pet, because I want you all to say, I want to tell you all, good looking out. I love you. Will Laval, Elaine, I want you guys to know. Kelly, you are loved. I love every one of you. I want to send some love out to each and every one of you guys. It's time for us to get off. So, we've got to do some affirmations on today. Okay. I need you to repeat after me. You guys know how it happens. This is our affirmation. If I don't tell you, no one else is going to tell you. So the first thing I need you to know is that you are loved. Repeat after me. Say it. I am loved. I am loved. So much of this earth, all these people, all these things, it's set up to cause you to think that you're alone, to cause you to feel lonely, to cause you to feel like you're isolated. I need you to just say to yourself today, I am loved. I'm loved. You are loved. If no one else tells you that they love you, I love you. And if you if you can't go by anybody else's faith about that, go on mine. Just say, I'm loved. The next thing I want you to say is, this is going to be my best week ever. Say it out loud. If there are people around you who can hear you, say it so that they can hear it. This is going to be my best week ever because, see, hey, you're getting in the game. By proclaiming that, you get off the bench, out the stadium, off the sidelines, and you're getting in the game. You're setting yourself up for success. This is going to be my best week ever. Please say it. Say it. Say it. Say it with me. Say, God loves me and I love God. You are a loved person, and there is no reason for you to go out this week and think anything less than that. God loves me and I love God. You are loved. People around you love you. <clears throat> Life will cause you to feel like you're, you're, you're isolated and you're alone. Nothing can be further than the truth. You are the best thing I've ever met. And that leads me to our next affirmation. Look at that camera. Look at that screen. Look at the person next to you and say it. I'm the best you ever met. Oh, Cliff, I'm supposed to be humble. Cliff, they don't want me to be bold. Cliff, I'm not. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Like I told you earlier, do you know what kind of boldness it takes to look at somebody and say, I am the way, the truth, and the life? And if somebody can look at you and say that and boldly proclaim it, then you can look at that screen and the person next to you and say, I'm the best you ever met. I want you to be the best realtor, the best broker, the best mother, the best father, the best politician, the best preacher, the best anything you can be. But you got to know you're the best and you've got to have that swagger about you because part of being the best is knowing you're the best. I didn't say brag on yourself, but I am saying know who you are on today and walk in it. So look at that screen. Tell everybody around you, I'm the best you ever met. Okay. Okay. I got a couple of uplifters out there. You're feeling it. I'm going to take a 30 second pause because I want to tell you guys to make sure you share this week's episode. Make sure that everybody around you knows. One of the things that I love about Uplift with Clip is the power of all of you guys. Let me tell you, at any given time, we might have 50 to 60 to 70 people watching, but did you know every week we average a thousand views? 
just off of you. Do not think that those shares and the way that you're sharing it is not having an effect. You are changing people's lives one share at a time, one like at a time, one thumbs up at a time. We only have, right now we have 57 people watching, but I promise you, when I get back to my office by 10:30, it will be 357. By five o'clock, it'll be 557, and by the end of the week, it'll be a thousand, sometimes 1,300 views. It's, this is the most powerful show in the world, and I love it. And we're doing it organically. So many people have asked, uh, can we take it, put it on a different platform? And I've been very loath to do so because I like the intimate surroundings of talking to you guys. And I don't want people showing up here for the wrong reason. But I need you to know that you are loved. Now, the next affirmation is, I'm a great parent and my children love me. I'm a great parent and my children love me. You got to believe that because when you're whole on the inside, you're whole on the outside. I'm a great parent and my children love me. Now, now, after I'm a great parent and my children love me, this next one, we're going to type it in the screen. We're going to type this one in the screen. Okay, because now we're going to speak life into our business. We're going to speak life into our business. I will add three new clients this week. I will add three new clients this week. You see, in order for a goal to be reachable, you got to be willing to go out and proclaim it. Say it. I will add three new clients this week. Whatever your business is, whatever you're selling, I will add three new clients this week. I will add three new clients this week. I will because you're going to fall in love with the process. If you fall in love with the process like I told you, don't look for the uh, destination. Fall in love with the process. Fall in love with the practice. Fall in love with the prospecting. Then you're going to get good and you will be adding those three new clients. So I need you to fall in love with the process this week. Don't be so worried about the destination. Destinations will come. But listen, we reach our destination here at, at Aura all the time. But Aura is the ship that never reaches shore. It's the train that never reaches station. I don't have an ending, honey. I've only got a beginning. <laughs> Y'all didn't catch me. Y'all didn't catch that. I don't have an ending, honey. All I got is a beginning. And then there's the middle part. This is the ship that never reaches shore. And the, and the train that never reaches station because we are in love with the process of serving you. We're in love with prospecting for new realtors. We're in love with causing you to be the best realtor you can be. And I need you to get in love with the processes yourself. Oh, some of y'all got it. Some of y'all got it. That's right, Rosie. I will add three new clients this week. Okay. Okay. People are texting me. Why is everybody texting me? Goodness. Okay. Okay. Stop texting me. Y'all know I'm online. Okay. So the last one, the last one, uh, we're going to set some goals. I told you we're going to add three new clients this week. Uh, and this is the 8th of February. I need you to speak this into existence. I will have three closings this month. Three closings this month. Three new clients this week. Three closings this month. Say it, say it, say it. I know what you're thinking, but Cliff, I don't, I don't even have one client. Well, you don't have one because you haven't started working towards one. I need you to speak it into existence. I will have three closings this month. Set goals, ladies and gentlemen. You see, what we're doing is I'm putting you out there with yourself. I'm putting you on blast with yourself. I'm making you set personal goals so that you can go out and attain those goals. But if you don't set any, you won't reach any. So I'm going to have three closings this month. That's right. Three closings this month. For the, we need to go one step further. You see, the affirmations aren't limited to business. Say it to yourself, I will repair my marriage. I will repair my marriage. I will, I will have a successful business. I will have a successful business. I will turn my business around. I will turn my business around. I will get the job done. I will get the job done. You have to say it, say it. You see, there's so many other voices competing for your mind. There's so many other voices competing for your mind. There's so many other voices competing for your mind. There's so many other voices competing for your mind. There are so many other voices. This is the most valuable piece of real estate that you own. And there are a thousand other voices competing for it. Tico, they don't hear me. This is the most valuable piece of real estate you own. It's not your home, honey. It's not your car, honey. 
It's not what your grandma and granddad and them left you, honey. It's not your resort property. The most valuable piece of real estate that you own is right here. And there are a lot of things and voices competing for it. And you have got to fill it up with positive thoughts. I will be successful. I will have a successful business. I will have a successful marriage. I am a great realtor. I am a great father. I am a great politician. Because the world wants you to believe Every time you see somebody else's success on the internet, it must mean that you're a failure. Every time you see somebody else riding in a Mercedes and you're not, it must mean that your business is, is not doing well. Every time you see somebody and they're just, oh honey, he bought me a new ring, you think your marriage is a failure. Every time you see somebody laying on an island and you're not on the island, you think that you're broke. You have got to cut that out and fill your mind, fill this real estate with its highest and best use and that's with positive thoughts and affirmations of how great you are. This has been Uplift with Cliff. I'm nine minutes over, but it's nine minutes well spent. I got to go, y'all. I got to let you go. I cannot sit here all day because you know I will. I need you guys to understand that you are the best thing that ever happened to me. So I'm taking care of you like there ain't no tomorrow. I got to go, y'all. Listen. I've been looking for you. It's time to go. Remember, the battlefield is the mind. The battlefield is the mind. And thoughts become things. Thoughts become things. This has been Uplift with Cliff. It is February the 8th. It's 10, 10 a.m. And I got to get out of here. I got some place to be, and so do you. We're getting ready to have our best week ever, and I need you to live like it, act like it, walk like it, talk like it, be like it. Be that person that you were always meant to be. You are that woman. You are that man. You are that realtor. You are that mother. You are that father. You are the one that I have been waiting for. You're the one I've been waiting on. Today is going to be your best day ever, and this week is going to be your best week ever, and I just need you to walk it out, talk it out, be about it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And in the background, Yolan, you will see uh, a shot of Lake Jessa. You see, last week I gave you guys a contest, and I said, show me Send me your background. And I had one or two people to send me their background. And this is the background of Lake Jessup. Yolan sent it over to us. So we're going to sit here for a second and ruminate. There ain't no gators in this lake. Nothing but lily pads and sunsets. If you would like for me to feature your background where you live on Uplift with Cliff, send it. Is it to marketing at OrlandoRealtors.org? Send it to marketing at orlandorealtors.org and we will use your background on Uplift with Cliff. Best week ever. <laughs>